If you're looking for an electric pickup truck, there's really only two options that have been officially announced, the Cybertruck and the Rivian. Well, neither of these trucks you'll actually see on the road today because neither of them are technically available yet. You can reserve both of them and each one of them carries their own unique features and very different approaches in design. So today's video, so in today's video, I wanted to dive into the pros and cons of getting a Cybertruck versus getting a Rivian. And for the sake of keeping this at least somewhat interesting, Let's hold off on the uh, design preferences until a little bit later and just look at the raw facts. The amazing thing about the Cybertruck is how much they actually were able to undercut the Rivian. I saw a few YouTubers out there saying that Rivian's probably so happy that the Cybertruck looks so weird and took such a different and unique design direction that it did. And you may be partially right, but I think mostly deep down, they're scared. No, they're not necessarily scared that everyone's going to prefer the cyberpunk Blade Runner aesthetic because Rivian obviously went with a much more clean, much more safe pickup truck looking design that they can also turn into an SUV. And the people that are into Rivian, I think are still going to remain into Rivian. In fact, there's probably enough of the pickup truck market that you can still sell a lot of the Cybertruck and also still have plenty of room for the Rivian because of how many people actually buy pickup trucks. But what Rivian is worried about is the specs Tesla pulled out at this event. Mostly of that of the triple motor setup. See, Rivian has not detailed the different configurations you can order very much yet. They basically have a starting price they're aiming for, and then they have a starting range, and then they also have a couple of up to specs, which are intentionally vague because they're saying, we're gonna do this, we're going to achieve these numbers, but we're not gonna tell you exactly how much that model costs, which anytime a company isn't wanting to tell you how much something costs it's usually because it's up there and even though we don't necessarily know what a maxed out Rivian is going to cost the numbers are already showing that the Cybertruck is probably going to crush it in every way see on Rivian's website they advertise that they have a 0 to 60 speed of three seconds with the R1T and again that's up to you get up to 400 miles of range which is still very good for an EV but we don't know how much they're gonna charge for that 400 mile range model given we've heard from Rivian in the past that they want to start the R1T at around $69,000, which is a lot higher than the starting price of the Cybertruck. And they said that that base range would likely be in the 200 mile department. So these numbers could definitely change by the time the Rivian actually starts shipping. But they've told press members in the past that the base range would be around 230. I'll round it up a little bit to 250 because hopefully Rivian can figure some of these power efficiency things out before they actually launch next year. But still a $70,000 price tag for a range that rivals the base range of the Cybertruck does not look good for the specifications of the Rivian. Well, it is cool that the Rivian has four independent motors. It sounds like when it comes to rear towing capabilities, the Cybertruck also is going to have the advantage, of course, when maxed out. With the triple motor Cybertruck price being $70,000 with zero to 60 in under three seconds, a range of over 500 miles and towing capability of around 14,000 pounds. This is why Rivian is not ecstatic about the Cybertruck. Design preferences aside, if someone's in the market for just a pickup and wants to know what they can get the best bang for their buck for, the Cybertruck is going to be very difficult to ignore. Even if you're not a fan of that Blade Runner-esque design, you can't argue with actual raw specifications. And $70,000 for a lot of people who work out on ranches or use their pickup trucks for work on the daily, that's a lot of money to invest in a truck, okay? So I feel like there's a pretty decent size of the market that's not necessarily carrying about what the exterior of their pickup looks like. They're looking for what can give them the maximum performance for the price they're willing to pay. And I can confidently tell you from being a guy who used to work on a Mandarin ranch and we drove an F-350 on that ranch almost every single day, range was not extremely important with that truck. It was that we were driving it around, filling it with equipment and going out to the orchards and coming back to the farmhouse and unloading it. You know, it wasn't necessarily something that towed a lot or even drove very far, but it was still a pickup that needed to be big, needed to have lots of space, and had decent amount of payload and torque capabilities. And if maybe in my lifetime I was born decades later, I think my boss would have heavily considered the Cybertruck, giving its low starting price, compared to what other pickups can do for that price, and the lower cost of maintenance. This is something that Rivian will have a very tough time competing with, because there's a lot of people out there that are in the market for a pickup truck and are not going to be anywhere near ready to spend $70,000 on this thing and start Starting it out at $40,000 is going to be a very compelling model, even if it is just rear-wheel drive, and even if the range
range is only 250 miles. For an electric vehicle, that's actually really good and expected standard with the lower price EVs these days. But the fact that it's $40,000 means that you're getting better range than the Ford Mach-E, which isn't even out yet. And this thing can sit one more person than the Ford Mach-E. So forget the part of it being a pickup truck. This is just a decently range and priced EV altogether. Even if you didn't need a bed in the back, even if you didn't need this giant super duty, heavy, durable build, it's just a decent EV for driving around in the first place. But of course the price and range of other EVs will change by the time this thing actually starts shipping. But as it stands right now, it's pretty impressive. I think what Rivian's done with their design is try to show people how functional and how easy it is for an electric pickup truck to fit in in our daily lives, but, but with one small problem, it's going to end up costing you way more than the average pickup truck costs, whereas the Cybertruck falls closer in line with what most people are willing to spend on a pickup truck. Now, I still think the R1T has room for success now, given Rivian has not delivered a single vehicle to a customer, and they're still kind of newer to this EV game. They have lots of funding from both Ford and Amazon. Tesla has a better track record of, okay, here's what we unveiled on stage, and then this is what we actually delivered. They've proven that with the Model 3. If you go back and watch that event, you can see that they basically were true to all of the milestones and all of the specifications they listed the Model 3 with, and they have a pretty decent track record of actually producing factories, getting them up and running, and getting pretty close to hitting those price points that they want to reach. Sometimes they are late to it, but they do get there. Rivian is kind of untested in this department. Will the R1T by the end of next year actually deliver on all these specifications that they're promising? It's hard to say. We have nothing to grade them off of. But the encouraging thing about the Cybertruck is that in the past, while Tesla is known for being late on some things, more recently, they've actually been ahead of schedule on the Tesla Model Y, kind of breaking the norm that, oh yeah, Tesla's always late to the game. But given they have a track record of listing specifications and in fact exceeding them by the end result, there's a pretty good chance that the Cybertruck, by the time it actually starts delivering, could be better performing than we're hearing about right now because of breakthroughs in battery tech or breakthroughs in the powertrain where they can make it even more efficient or software updates that can even come to the Cybertruck in time and turn it into an even better performing pickup. So that's why Rivian should probably be scared of the Cybertruck and really consider trying to find ways of making the battery packs cheaper and trying to start the Rivian at a lower starting price, which may I just mention, this is the great thing about competition. No, I'm not anti-Rivian and while my bias does fall towards Tesla, I still think it's great that Tesla priced this Cybertruck so low, even if the design isn't universally liked because that means that other electric vehicles out there, whether they're from Ford, whether they're from Toyota, or whether they're from startups like Rivian, they now have to compete more aggressively to reach the specs, to reach the performance of the Cybertruck, and result in everybody trying to make the best possible electric pickup, which at the end of the day, that's the most important thing, right? That we get people moving towards more sustainable energy. So Tesla trying to make it competitive against everyone else is really good for anyone who's in the market, because hopefully that means in the future, Rivians will get much cheaper and more affordable, and Ford will realize that just because you're making an electric vehicle, that doesn't mean you can price it that much higher than a standard pickup truck. Maybe that's a subject for another day, how Ford will respond to the Cybertruck, but while we're on the topic of just Rivian versus Cybertruck, you guessed it, the Tesla sheep here probably thinks the Cybertruck is actually going to sell better, mostly because of that lower starting price, and while some of you out there may absolutely despise the design and think this looks stupid and never should have left the original Tomb Raider games from polls I've seen and from reading a lot of comments and a lot of tweets, the design appears to be jaw-dropping at first, but people grow to like it with time. I've already seen a ton of people that said they originally hated the design come around in the next couple days and then go, you know what? It's actually kind of growing on me and I kind of like it the more I look at it. So many YouTubers have already said this and as a bunch of us consider the Cybertruck design to be controversial, Tesla, I actually believe, really knows what they're doing here. They knew that they could not go into this market with a traditional looking pickup truck and they probably knew they had to do something drastic with the design to make it more affordable. And while we don't know the exact details of it yet, there's lots of evidence to suggest that the flat design, lack of curves, and the simple to manufacture steel with that flat glass on all the windshield and windows actually saves a ton of money on manufacturing, which is what brought it to this lower starting price. And if they wanted to make something closer to the Rivian, the Tesla pickup truck would have ended up costing way more than it actually does. You can argue with me on that, but the issue is you don't really have much proof, you don't really have much evidence that you can make an electric pickup truck that looks normal and has as low a starting price with as great as specifications as the Cybertruck does. There could be a way, but no other company has shown how to do it. So until then, uh, my statement kind of holds up that if you go with this design, you can statistically 
get great range, pretty good performance at a very affordable starting price, despite all the other perks of driving a Cybertruck, the lower cost of maintenance, air compressor, adaptive air suspension, the very, very large interior with lots of headroom, larger display on the inside, tailgate that turns into a ramp. There's a ton of benefits that come along with this thing, despite it costing the same as a Model 3. And Rivian, you might want to step on your game. I think you might win a lot of more internet troll message boards, but I'm not sure if you'll win as many people's pockets over if they're willing to spend an extra $30,000 just so that they can have a truck that looks normal. Let me know what you guys would choose versus the Rivian R1T or the Cybertruck. I would also love to see a tug of war between those two EVs. Whoever wins electric vehicles win at the end. And I appreciate you all watching this video. Have a great day. Take care.